So Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is not only the best selling game in the Mario Kart franchise as of December 2022, it is in fact the best selling game on the Nintendo Switch. But if you're a fan of kart races, you may be wondering whether or not there are any worthy competitors out there. In today's video then, I've gone ahead and rounded up 12 plus other kart racers worth considering. And alongside this list, I've also released a separate kart racers for kids video, which aims to highlight a selection of simpler, more child friendly offerings in the genre. Without further ado though, drop a like and subscribe for more Switch reviews, deals and top lists just like this. And join me as we check out 12 alternative kart racing games on the Nintendo Switch. So first up then, we have what I consider to be one of, if not the best Mario Kart alternative on the platform. And admittedly, my opinion is a little biased with this one as I played countless hours of it back in the day, but Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled is essentially a remastered version of Naughty Dog's PS1 classic with a ton of new game modes, characters and features. Alongside the original cast of characters, including of course Crash himself, Neo Cortex and the EverQ Paula, you'll find 50 others, some of which are unlocked by progressing through the game's adventure mode or completing challenges, whilst others are purchased from the Pit Stop, an in-game shop which refreshes daily, where you can also pick up new costumes, vehicle skins and decals using Wumper coins and these can be earned either in-game or, rather sadly, via microtransactions. The main negative with this one is that you have to actually be online to access the pit shop, so unlock progression will eventually come to a halt if you're playing offline. But with a classic and refined adventure mode, as well as a decent selection of race and battle modes, which can be played both offline in four-player split screen or online with up to seven other players, there's plenty on offer when it comes to content with this one. Next up we have a bit more of a budget racer with All Star Fruit Racing, a game which could easily fit into the kids category but still has a decent amount to offer to adults. This one though definitely gives off those Wreck-It Ralph vibes with its food theme and features 21 tracks spread over 5 seasonal islands, 22 characters to choose from and a variety of game modes including career, drag racing, hill climbs and eliminations. But the most unique aspect of this one has to be its power-up system which instead of using the usual random pickup method, has you collecting different fruits and filling up gauges, and then combining the juices to unleash powerful combo abilities. Unfortunately, like many Switch ports, the quality of this one does suffer a little due to long load times and the visual quality on the Switch, but aside from this, Overall, it's a pretty decent little kart racer, and it regularly goes on sale for only a couple of dollars. So the first of a couple of weirder ones today on our list, up next we have Coffin Dodgers, a kart racer whose premise sees a cast of eight geriatrics facing off against death himself. As they pimp up the mobility skewers and take to the streets of the Sunny Pines retirement community in a race for their lives. Alongside a 13 race championship where only the top ranking pensioners will progress with their souls intact, there's also a 2 to 4 player split screen race mode, and as well as the usual assortment of power ups, the game also has some road rash style melee combat for those craving a bit of granny bashing. All in all, it might not be the most polished entry in our list today but it's a unique premise which should hopefully translate into an amusing offline multiplayer experience. So Super Toy Cars is the next entry in this list, or more the next three entries in this list, as the series saw its third entry, Super Toy Cars Off-Road, released in May of this year. Styled after the Micro Machine games, these tabletop racers see you controlling miniature cars and tearing your way through environments comprised of supersized everyday objects, from bedrooms and backyards to casinos, construction sites and kitchens. There's some great variety when it comes to the tracks and cars, and the career mode features a variety of different game modes to keep things interesting. 
the main issue with these ones, again, is the performance on the Switch, with them having a few frame rate issues, and the fact that things are a little limited when it comes to player numbers, with there being no online multiplayer, and the first game offering four player split screen, while the second and third are two players only. But all in all, there's still plenty of fun to be had with its miniaturised mayhem, and if you want to know more, you can check out my review of the third game right here on the channel. Similarly to our previous entry, next up we have Tabletop Racing World Tour Nitro Edition. A rather long title, but another Micro Machine style combat racer which appears to be sponsored by Your Sushi. So you're guaranteed to be racing amongst some rice balls and sake at some point. Amongst its game modes though you'll find a single player championship mode, two player split screen versus modes and eight player online modes to jump into, and in total the game features 32 racetracks and over 180 events to take on. But in addition to 8 cunning power ups and 16 upgradable race cars, one of the most unique aspects of this one has to be its wheel upgrades, which offer unique abilities such as drifting, jumping or the power to destroy all active weapons. If you've tried super toy cars and didn't find it to your liking, tabletop racing is definitely a very viable alternative option. But if you want to know more, I recommend checking out Switch Up's awesome review of it, linked down in the pinned comment below. Back to a more mainstream kart racing series then, next up we have the Nickelodeon Kart Racers games, of which there are three of them, those being Nickelodeon Kart Racers, Kart Racers 2 Grand Prix and Kart Racers 3 Slime Speedway all of which offer some classic combat racing and have you playing as iconic Nickelodeon characters from series such as Spongebob, Rugrats, Hey Arnold, Ren and Stimpy and the Ninja Turtles. With a super vibrant colour palette, the game has you racing through series themed levels from Bikini Bottom to Dexter's Lab, and while the first game keeps things pretty simple, the second and third add in crew members, which in addition to multiple power ups can be combined with your racer to form powerful combinations with unique abilities. And alongside 4 player split screen modes, the second and third entries feature online multiplayer for 8 and 12 players respectively. Once again it's worth noting that the games do suffer a little from performance issues on the Switch, especially in the third tile where the frame rate drops to around 20 FPS at times, making for some very frustrating racing. But all in all the pretty solid alternatives, that is if you don't mind the more juvenile character lineup. So it's unsurprising that after the success of Final Fantasy VII and the game's chockable racing minigame, that Square Enix finally decided to take the plunge and deliver fans a dedicated racing title. But unlike its on-rails predecessor, Chocobo GP is a kart racer, which pits iconic characters and creatures from the series, such as Gilgamesh, Atla the Moogle, Sid and Terra, against one another in a racing tournament. Each though comes with their own form of transport and special abilities to invoke, and the power up system has you gathering magicite crystals to cast classic Final Fantasy spells and give you the upper hand. It's pretty standard kart racer stuff with some minor tweaks here and there, but the game features a story mode, offline multiplayer for 1-2 players and online multiplayer for up to 8 players. With a selection of 10 different tracks to race on, whose designs take influence from notable locations from the series. A decent little spin off tile, this one, definitely looking to cater for fans of the series, but all in all, not a bad little car racer. So, the Smurfs franchise is one which was established even before my time, and over the years its popularity has fluctuated up and down, with its latest iteration being a CGI animated TV series. But Smurfs Cat is another attempt from our blue bodied Belgians to break into the wonderful world of video games. Taking influence from Mario Kart is certainly one way to go about it though, and Smurf's Kart shamelessly replicates most of that game's mechanics, which actually results in a pretty solid racer. 
featuring a roster of 12 fan favourites including good old Papa Smurf and that bit of blue crumpet Smurf Air, 12 tracks taken from the Smurf universe and familiar power sliding and power up mechanics as well as multiple racing speeds and driving assistance options is pretty much Mario Kart in all but name. And while it does lack the same amount of content as its influencer and the multiplayer is local only for up to four players, all in all it turns out to be a solid little kart racer for both kids and adults alike. So Team Sonic Racing is up next, another mainstream kind tile which given the long time rivalry between Sega and Nintendo comes as somewhat of a surprise on the platform, but Nintendo does appear to have put it behind them, undoubtedly for a tidy sum of cash. That aside, Team Sonic Racing of course features Sega's blue herd mascot and a selection of buddies and baddies from the series to play as. And this time round the power ups come in the form of wisps, which much like other games provide a variety of offensive and defensive abilities. One unique feature about the game though is the ability to share unwanted power ups with your teammates, which in turn charges your ultimate meter, which when fully charged provides an unstoppable speed boost. But in addition to 15 playable characters, customizable vehicles and 21 racetracks spread across 7 different zones based on locations from past Sonic games, all in all it's a great alternative to Mario Kart and definitely keeps that historic rivalry alive and well. So Disney Speedstorm is the most recent release on our list today and as the name suggests it's a kart racer centred around the Disney franchise so expect to be hitting the tarmac and partaking in some classic combat racing as the likes of Mickey Mouse, Buzz Lightyear and Jack Sparrow. His tracks of course are inspired by sets and scenes from classic and modern Disney movies throughout the ages and alongside a chapter based story mode which has you taking on challenges with specific races to unlock additional vehicles and characters, there's also a 4 player local and online multiplayer. Unlike our other titles today though, Disney Speedstorm is set to be a live service free to play game and there are currently a selection of foundation packs on offer providing early access to the game as well as a variety of in-game goodies. What I'm hearing from early impressions is that the game does overcomplicate things though with multiple progression systems and a credit based unlock system which alongside a season pass system will undoubtedly lead to a ton of in-app purchases and the verdict is still very much out there as to how much this will affect free to play players. But if you're a Disney fan and don't mind a grind or dipping into your pockets and spending a bit of cash for those extra unlocks then it might be worth a pun. So for our final few games today we're heading back to the weird and wonderful indie scene where first up we have Gekisu Benta Race Toilet Shooting Star, a title which is not yet available on the US Switch eShop but one which looks absolutely insane and has you touring around tracks whilst perched atop a royal throne. The gameplay with this one looks as mental as it sounds and though I can't speak for the overall quality of it, from what I can gather it's set amongst the streets of Japan and has you firing off toilet rolls and using onigiris to defend yourself and overall it looks to be a pretty simple kart racer. All in all though it's a baffling concept for a kart racer and only supports two players locally but it might be worth a shot if you're in the market for something a little different. Similarly to our previous title, Gensu Skydrift is another kart racer straight out of Japan and is a spin-off title from the Tohu Bullet Hell Shoot 'em Up series. This one though is almost as strange as our last title, as instead of karts, the game has you racing as a duo, with one character stood atop the other, riding them like a surfboard but you're able to mix and match these characters and swap between them whilst racing, with each of them having different stats and abilities for you to activate. The gameplay itself though looks pretty enjoyable and it looks to be more of a mixture of Mario Kart and F-Zero, but there are 16 courses to race on, 1-4 player local and 1-7 player online multiplayer modes, 
and a campaign mode for those looking for a more story-driven single-player experience. Rounding off our list then, we have another title which is edging slightly more towards the F-Zero side of things with Warp Drive, a high-speed drone racing game with some unique teleporting mechanics which allow you to cut corners and create shortcuts through its levels. Much like its karting counterparts though, this one is very much a battle racer which has you collecting crystals in courses to power up and activate your abilities, and between races you're able to make improvements to your drone to upgrade its attributes and give you a better chance of winning subsequent races. Some awesome visuals in this one though with a hefty dash of neon for good measure and with a decent selection of tracks, 4 player local multiplayer and multiple race modes, in my opinion it's well worth checking out, though it is worth noting that for some bizarre reason there's no quick play mode in the game so you can really set up your own races and customise them, but if it is something you're considering picking up, I highly recommend checking out Switch Corner's full review of the game, linked down in the pinned comment below. So before we close out this video then, I have a couple of honourable mentions for you. The first being Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, which was excluded from this list mainly due to the fact that it requires you to buy the kit and additional cars if you want to race multiplayer. This one though lets you piece together your very own racetrack amongst your home, placing down gears to create a course before connecting your switch to the miniature car's camera which in turn provides an augmented reality racing experience for you to enjoy. Your creativeness and the track size itself are your main limitations here and it's also a little expensive but it's certainly a classic case of Nintendo innovation bordering on being gimmicky whilst also being a lot of fun. Now our second and final honourable mention is LEGO 2K Drive, a game which is still in the pipe work but is set to see a release in May of this year, and this one is aiming to put a new and unique spin on the classic kind formula, adding in an open world for you to explore and allowing you to build your very own cars brick by brick. Alongside a story mode which sees you progressing from a rookie racer to famous champion, there are also single and cup series modes and a selection of mini games which you can play locally in two player split screen or online with up to five other friends. From what we've seen so far, it definitely looks set to put an interesting new twist on things, but whether or not it has what it takes to compete with the big boys of the genre is still yet to be seen. So there you have it then, 12 plus alternative kart racers worth considering, so let me know down below if you've played any of these and which if any you would recommend to others. Like I said, if you're looking to get your younguns into the genre then be sure to check out my kart racers for kids video and I also have a bunch of other top list videos covering off things like the best family friendly and local co-op games as well as retro FPS, beat em ups and chill out titles, so be sure to go give those a watch too. But for now, drop a like if this one helped you out, consider subscribing to the channel for more Nintendo Switch reviews and content, and until next time, take care of yourselves and game on.